you win. February 26th. The day the internet fought the telecommunications industry and actually won. I was an entrepreneur. I was a VC. I have seen up close and personal the effects of networks being closed on innovation. Before becoming the FCC chairman and before his 25 year long career as the top telecommunications industry lobbyist, Tom Wheeler tried to change the world. As an entrepreneur in the mid 80s, he connected PCs together by delivering data over less regulated cable television lines. A few blocks away, a competitor was doing the exact same thing, except his service relied on less regulated, more open telephone lines. Fast forward 30 years, and now Tom Wheeler is getting a chance to make internet history again. Today, the internet is the most powerful economic engine in the United States. But lately, cable and wireless companies have been trying to make more money by leveraging leveraging their network power. Money is a powerful incentive, Dollars. a powerful tool for affecting the world. I've talked about it in this Bitcoin video, I'll link below. And again, to make this point more clearly, this scene from the movie Sneakers has always stuck with me. Money's most powerful ability is to allow bad people to continue doing bad things at the expense of those who don't have it. It's about who controls the information, what we see and hear, how we work, what we think. It's all about the information. But the latest battle for the control of information is about to end. How did Tom Wheeler's entrepreneurial experience help him decide how exactly to keep the internet open? Part one, the FCC and the law. One of the goals of the Telecommunications Act of 1996 is to encourage faster internet speeds. And over the years, the FCC has been slowly raising the bar on broadband networks. For example, last week, the FCC finally defined broadband as 25 megabits down. 80% of Americans have access to uh, speeds of uh, 25 uh, MIPS down and three up. But only three quarters of those have a choice. Now to achieve this goal, the Telecommunications Act is supposed to encourage innovation through more competition. You see, a long time ago, the telephone companies had a monopoly. At one point, Ma Bell, the largest company in the world, controlled almost all communications in the United States. So the law regulated companies as either telecommunications services or information services. First, a telecommunications service under Title II is, by definition, the offering of telecommunications for a fee. Second, an information service under Title I is the offering of information via telecommunications. The distinction is kind of ambiguous, but it's really important in terms of regulatory power. Companies categorized as a Title II telecommunications service are under more strict regulation. But the phone monopoly truly broke down with the rise of cable, wireless, and satellite networks. I bet good money that most of you don't pay for landlines anymore. Then in 2002, the FCC tried something different. It classified cable as an information service and therefore under less regulation and with complete control over its own lines. Eventually the FCC did the same for DSL and wireless carriers, hoping that less regulation would promote more investment and innovation leading to better quality, lower prices, and more choices for consumers. In other words, competition. Instead, the consolidation of the telecommunications industry has actually left us with fewer choices. And then recently, broadband companies started getting greedy, exploring new ways to tax internet companies. But it's time for change. Lots of things have changed in terms of technology, in terms of capabilities, in terms of things that are being brought to the market. Trying to create an environment in which you stimulate competition and uh, encourage innovation. And the FCC has the power as an independent federal agency created by Congress to regulate communications in the US. Part two, the open internet works. Let's go back to Tom Wheeler's entrepreneurial career. Speaking of his competitor across the street, Wheeler said, we used to look down our noses at them because their service was so slow. But even though his service was technically better, in the end, his startup went bankrupt his competitor became AOL, and he started his career as a cable industry lobbyist. But in the process, he also learned an important and valuable lesson about networks. He said that the phone networks AOL was using were open, whereas the cable networks his startup relied on were closed. AOL could build a national footprint immediately, while his startup had to go from cable operator to cable operator just to ask permission to get on their networks. And as we all know, AOL grew to become the first company to connect millions of people to the internet for the first time. As a matter of fact, the internet itself exists because it's a dumb but open network. People can connect to whatever content they desire. To compare to older networks before the internet, 
all the value and intelligence was in the centralized mainframe that was connected to simple but dumb terminals. But on the internet today, all the intelligence and value comes from the 1.5 billion PCs and 2 billion smartphones connected to the network. No single computer or organization has too much power. Part 3. The open internet wins. Here are the highlights. The FCC chairman has proposed to classify broadband internet access service as a telecommunications service under Title II. Just like that, Tom Wheeler tightened regulations on the cable and wireless industries. Side note, 55% of all internet traffic today happens wirelessly, and it's growing. AT&T and Verizon just spent billions on wireless spectrum, while Dish now owns as much spectrum as T-Mobile. You know, Dish and Google and SpaceX should work together to get internet satellites off the ground, literally. Back to the video. The battleground for network wars has shifted. The FCC has extended protections to consumers no matter how they get online. That means the FCC now has legal authority to enforce three rules. One. No blocking. Providers can't block access to legal content. Two. No throttling, which actually means they can't degrade traffic on the basis of content. Three. And no paid prioritizations. They can't favor some traffic over other traffic. Other highlights. The FCC will ensure fair access to polls and conduits in the deployment of new broadband networks. Translation? Hello, Google Fiber. The FCC will not regulate rates or require companies to lease access to their networks. The FCC will review complaints about interconnection points where tier one networks transfer data to last mile providers like Comcast. For example, Netflix had to pay millions of dollars to fix this problem in order to stream their videos more smoothly. Now the FCC can take action against deals that are not just and reasonable. And the universal service fees that apply to phones will not apply to internet services. And in other words, no new taxes. But why does the FCC need these tough rules? Some will say, why not let the market regulate itself? Tom Wheeler himself described the FCC's role this way. If the competitive market isn't working, then there's a responsibility that we as a representative of the people have to step in and do something about that. And let me give you four examples of network carriers limiting competition. Verizon has been blocking payment services. In 2011, blocked Google Wallet, and just this year blocked PayPal's fingerprint authorization because carriers are trying to get their own payment infrastructure off the ground by blocking competitors. Wireless carriers cannot block tethering apps. Before the FCC stepped in, Verizon blocked tethering and charged subscribers $20 a month to enable it. AT&T blocked video chatting apps like Apple's FaceTime and Google Hangouts. And last, Comcast cannot throttle file sharing websites. And for those who argue that more regulation might decrease investment, well, after President Obama came out in public support of net neutrality, the wireless carriers bid a record amount of money for Spectrum. And from 1996 to 2007, the wireless carriers invested billions of dollars upgrading their infrastructure even though they were more tightly regulated as Title II carriers. So the profit motive will still be alive and well. But net neutrality doesn't change some things. For example, data caps still apply, and wireless carriers can still throttle data as long as it's not done on the basis of content. And given the way the US government works, there will definitely be court challenges. But the open internet is great for consumers and for entrepreneurs. For consumers, we get access to any legal content we choose to download without interference from broadband providers. For entrepreneurs, their content is not blocked or throttled by ISPs, giving them a chance to introduce their products and services on an even playing field. And this has huge implications for the Internet of Things. To sum it all up, the Internet service providers no longer have the power to act as gatekeepers to the data we choose to upload or download, That's right. to the content we choose to produce or consume. The rules of the game are now in place for our benefit and the network wars just got a bit more competitive. What am I supposed to do? Survive. Sorry about the background noise. It's really wet here in the Bay Area, which is unusual, but I'm glad that we're finally getting some rain because the drought here has been pretty scary. So again, thank you guys for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. I know a lot of YouTubers say this in their videos and I try to save this part for the end of the video, but I've noticed that a lot of you are engaging more, liking, sharing these videos, so I really appreciate that because it really lets other people find and discover the content and uh, shows them that you appreciate what you like about the content, what you don't like about it, and helps me get better, of course, over the years. I wasn't planning on doing this video, but I wanted to cover net neutrality because it really is a historic moment in the evolution of the internet. 
uh, especially given the entire battle that's been going on for years over net neutrality. So I'm really excited and happy to see that now the rules of the game are in place and it's time for companies, for us to all get together and, and really benefit from net neutrality. I got all your comments in previous videos, especially the Gaming Wars video I did before. I left out a lot of stuff because I wanted it to be more general, more broad. Um, I hope to go into more detail for you guys in Chip Wars videos. Those will be more detailed, more focused on technical specifications. Uh, I hope you understand. I hope you guys are on board with that as I try to get more content going. And as always, thank you guys for spending your time here on My Next Appliance, where we all get to explore the latest technologies that change the world.